right, so we're just going to be playing. I, I, I will <laughs> try to not speak when you speak. <laughs> uh, we'll do our best. All right, so, um, so yeah, everyone that's coming on, sorry about that. It's just when you're doing live stuff, uh, especially when you're getting ready to get into some subjects uh, that people don't really – talk about it all weird stuff always happens but we're gonna get past it and I think we know I think we know what we're doing now so all right so Stephen Ben and Noon thank you so much again for coming on uh, and uh, I've got a lot of subjects coming on coming up uh, and I don't I'm just trying to figure out which one to start with so let's just go ahead and start with um, just for uh, opening sake uh, let's start with the Baltimore Bridge um, you know it's um, you know I saw the video of the Baltimore Bridge, uh, and in my personal opinion, okay, and it's very important tonight as, as me and Stephen Benin, as we talk and we dialogue and we kind of go through things that are happening, uh, everything that we're saying tonight is under the umbrella of hypothesis, personal opinion, our thoughts, okay? Uh, we're not reading anything or, or we're quoting anything from any news source or anything like that. We're just having a conversation this evening, okay? So please uh, make sure you understand that. And of course, we say that for community guideline purposes here on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, so in my personal opinion, I saw the Baltimore uh, Bridge attack. I saw the uh, freighter coming in. Uh, and in my personal opinion, it looked like it was heading straight for uh, that beam. Uh, matter of fact, uh, growing up on the Gulf Coast, uh, you know we're we're familiar with shipping channels and we're familiar with the tugboats and we. I mean, I've seen tons of ships come in and out. Uh, and one, that thing was already too close to the shoreline as it was making that bend to begin with. Uh, secondly, you know, you see the lights flicker on and off. Then you see the smoke come out. Uh, and uh, you, usually, if you get smoke like that, that means the, that the acceleration has picked up before uh, it makes anything. So to me, my personal opinion, and then I'm going to let you have at it, it looks like, in my opinion, that it was purposely ran into that bridge, and just before it hit, it actually accelerated um, just before they cut that power off for the last time. And so uh, if you got any information that you want to put in on that, uh, I think, um, you know, go for it. Yes, I do. Um, what I'm going to share with you is going to come from two different directions. Uh, one, like yourself, you know, talking about growing up on the Gulf Coast and stuff, my stepfather was a ship captain. Uh, and I had the luxury of being on these ships from an early age and he was so passionate wanting me to learn it. He hoped that I would go into his own footsteps, which I nearly did, um, that I actually learned to be able to navigate a ship. Uh, back in those days, we used radar. And, uh, and I, I, at one point, I went to work with the company that he worked for called Johnny Graham and Sons and a shipping company that worked uh, for the oil platforms out in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I was on a vessel with two captains and one captain was already asleep because he had been up on a night shift and the other captain decided he was going to go take a nap. And he said, Steve, he says, your dad taught you to navigate these things, didn't he? And I said, yeah, I know how to navigate one. He says, well, he gave me the coordinates for the Mississippi River. He says, uh, he says, you know, we're probably a good seven hours out. Uh, we were like 90 miles out into the Gulf of Mexico at that time. He said, just kind of head that direction there. He said, but I'll, I'll wake up in a couple hours. Well, he doesn't wake up. I'm up in the Mississippi River by the time he gets there. Yeah, I knew how to navigate one easily. Um, that being said, uh, and I ran a ship with twin engines as well at that time. Uh, when you saw the, if you'll notice in the video, you see one smokestack that is actually going uh, like you said, when you see that diesel pouring out, that smoke pouring out of that stack, that is a heavy, heavy engagement of that engine there. And that's actually what even steered the ship in the direction it, it turned. Uh, if, both, if both engines were running, then it would go straight. And, and typically, even with the one engine, it shouldn't have steered that quickly, but it is that sudden thrust of the engine. Now, they show the power going out again, even with that engine at full thrust, which is also suspicious in my opinion because the power would not be out. That's how you get your power on the ship is from the engines themselves. They're the ones that run the generator for the system. So that caught my attention. 
<clears throat> as it being obviously something that uh, could be very well att- uh, intentional from my perspective on that. Uh, and But at the same time, you know, I'm seeing that the pilot of the ship had sent out a mayday distress call uh, moments before they were able to stop traffic on the bridge. At least that's what we're being told. And, uh, and it does appear that, you know, there was a lot less traffic on the bridge when he does strike it. So they undoubtedly were able to stop somewhat of the traffic. Not everybody died. Um, and, and But just so happens, I've got some friends that live right around the corner from where that bridge is at. But more importantly is I was able to get direct information out of current uh, people in our government at uh, one of the three-letter agencies. I won't mention which one, although they've been in multiple of those agencies there. And, um, and that information that came back to me was that this was intentional. Um, now, they would not elaborate as to who was responsible. Um, we had to be kind of careful. We were not in a secure communique at the time. Uh, so we were very cautious in our wording and my questions, et cetera. Uh, but I did ask if this could be uh, utilized in the near future as a justification for a war in the Middle East or even a war uh, with Russia, uh, because I, I haven't really updated myself as well. Brother Anthony, you might know yourself on this already, but I would assume kind of like airplanes now with the navigational satellite navigational systems on ships as well, that they can probably put these on autopilot. And if that's the case, then they can also uh, commandeer a ship. So the captain could really be sincerely uh, in a distress situation and someone else to control that ship and then rammed it into the uh, piling on that bridge. Um, and I will tell you, too, these the pilings around the bridges and stuff are meant to be able to withstand a fairly good blow. Uh, you know, but when that thing's fully loaded down the way it is and with that engine as fast as they had that thing revved up, no doubt he's probably doing eight knots, something to that effect, about 10 miles an hour. Uh, that's pretty steady, pretty hard hit and collapsing that entire bridge. But then again, you have to ask yourself the question from what I'm understanding from the uh, government source there is that. There could have been some other things that that had been previously done to undermine the integrity of that bridge, Uh, because I still have a little bit of an issue with the fact that that it hit the bridge piling and collapsed it as easily as it did. Um, You know, again, these bridges are designed to be able to take a hit and uh, take a direct hit, no less. So unless the bridge is extremely old or something to that effect where it's already compromised in, in that regards, I'm not sure of, but, uh, but that, that's what we're looking at right now. And, and I'm really looking more towards the idea that they're going to try to justify this, maybe saying Iran has, because Iran does have some pretty incredible technology. Did they do it or is it somebody else? Don't really know yet. Yeah. I, I heard, um, um, I heard the rumor that I've heard anyway, I got to say rumor, um, is that it it was um, there. It's been theorized that it was a hack job uh, because a lot of those it it was a newer ship. I think it was in built. I think it set out in 2021 or something like that. Uh, And so my understanding is that it was it was commandeered uh, through the through some, you know, some other source. They didn't have any control of it. Uh, matter of fact, when that ship enters in the Baltimore, the Baltimore authorities are supposed to have full, um, you know, full access to that ship to, to guide it on in. Um, supposedly, this container ship, whatever it was, was actually from China, um, and it's suspected, from what I've from what I've heard anyway, that it could have been a deliberate act from China. Uh, and that's that's the the, the the that's what. The rumors, I have to say, I've heard concerning this, but nobody really knows. Uh, But, you know, I think what we all can agree on for sure is that when we look at the video, it just uh, it just looks like it was on purpose. I mean, you know, and not even the you know, I I don't watch too much mainstream media uh, news these days anyway. Uh, But not from what I understand, nobody's actually even coming out and saying, hey, this was on accident. Okay, Uh, I haven't heard that. Uh, but nobody's also come out and said, well, this is from, you know, another threat. They're not saying that either. It's just under investigation. So, uh, and I think that's kind of like the official 
word, so to speak. Right, right. So, all right, we'll switch gears off of that particular subject, and then uh, let's get into another one. Um, you know, we just had, uh, this is kind of fresh in, in, in everybody's minds right now, too. Uh, we just had, uh, you know, uh, an attack, I believe it was yesterday, from Israel uh, over to, uh, I believe it was Syria, and uh, one of the, I think in Damascus or wherever, where they uh, blew up and a, a, uh, or bombed an Iranian uh, consulate, took out some officials there. Uh, and of course, this was supposedly in retaliation for some drone strikes. Uh, that had taken place uh, the night prior to that. And so I think a lot of people are kind of wanting to know, you know, well, what's going to be the retaliation from this? You know, is there going to be this big conflict between Israel and Iran? Is there going to be, you know, is Russia and China going to aid with Iran and get into this, uh, you know, almost, almost like an Ezekiel type uh, war, you know, Ezekiel 30, you know, 30, 38, 39 type war. Uh, scenario or you know is Iran is Iran gonna just kind of you know use its proxies like it's done in the past and just uh, leave it alone you know um, yeah I think a lot of people are kind of you know wondering what's gonna happen uh, going forward and um, you know maybe you can shed some light on some things that you possibly know about that absolutely, absolutely. Um, General Zahadi is the uh, general that was actually targeted in that, that attack uh, by Israel. And, you know, Pastor Anthony, one of the things that's probably the most concerning about this is that this actually happened at uh, the, the compound adjacent to the Iranian embassy in, uh, inside of Damascus, Syria. Uh, those types of facilities are off limits in wartime. Uh, and for Israel to take and do that brazen of a, of a, of a strike um, really, really uh, speaks a lot at what Israel is trying to get Iran to do. And when I say they're trying to get Iran to do something, uh, this literally is Israel trying to get Iran to attack Israel. And a lot of people may not like that. They may not believe that. But. I've got uh, one particular source, former Iranian intelligence, uh, so I'm very familiar uh, within this government, with the Iranian government. Iran does not have the courage to take on Israel directly. They know the current regime in Iran, which is the most wicked regime you could ever have on the planet. The Iranian people do not want to be under oppression. They would, they would welcome, and I'm being honest about this. This comes right out of people that I know in Iran. They would welcome Israel to attack Iran and to overthrow its government or the United States, either one. Uh, but, you know, in, in my view, I hate to see people die, period. Uh, it's almost like, why? I mean, I don't know if people know this that are listening, Brother Anthony, but Christianity is in the Muslim world, the fastest place that Christianity is growing in the entire Middle East is Iran. Believe it or not, it's Iran. Uh, they have to be very cautious because the government is not fully tolerant, there, you know, uh, of, of Christians, uh, especially with this happening in this country. It's a good way to get, lose your head, so to speak. Uh, maybe not literally, but, you know, it's not a good thing for, for people that, that do believe that, that Jesus is the Messiah there. But they, there is a major movement. Over a million Christians are there now. That's how many that we have there. But in, in doing this, though, this targeting of the, of, um, of the general, this was Israel's way of one, as they're saying, take out a target. Now, how will Iran respond? Iran they will make all kinds of threats and make themselves look like they're tough, big, bad guys that could go and, and take out Israel, uh, things like that. And when it comes to technology, but what the Chinese have given to the Iranians and the Russians have given to the Iranians, they have given them some very sophisticated technology that would really put Israel uh, in a very awkward position if they did use their technology uh, they have cloaking devices for missiles to where the missile can be fired and cannot even be detected by anyone or seen by anyone until it's fixing to hit its target. 
they now have hypersonic weapons as well. Another thing that Israel does not have. And uh, so there is a, uh, there is some concern. But normally what Iran does is they just arm their their fighters uh, to go against uh, Israel. They'll do that all day long. They'll send weapons to the Houthis. They'll send them to Hezbollah. Uh, they'll send them to the different uh, factions inside of Syria to attack Israel. But unless they're on the verge of going out, they're not going to do anything. I got to let it log in. One second. Okay. So yeah, uh, for those of you that are just coming on, we got Stephen Ben the Noon here, and we've uh, so far we talked about the Baltimore Bridge, and uh, we both agree that you know this particular incident uh, was uh, intentional in our per in our opinions and from sources and things like that. Uh, and then we were talking about the Iran and Israeli conflict, and uh, that seems to be the kind of the consensus on that uh, is just that you know we don't really expect a much direct um, you know influence from Iran uh, to go after Israel. We don't expect a direct conflict between the two. However, the proxies will probably get involved. Uh, you know, we may see we may see a little bit more uh, coming from Hezbollah uh, toward the north. Uh, with their proxies and things like that. And, and I know there was uh, people talking of uh, Russia and China uh, getting involved and trying to help Iran, uh, you know, uh, figure out a way to, you know, retaliate against Israel and, uh, you know, even potentially the United States, although we've uh, kind of turned our back on Israel, you know, we've abstained uh, from uh, from some, some of the things that are going on right now. And uh, so, you know, relationships relationship is a little bit strange between us and Israel uh, but I don't you know I don't think there'll be anything direct conflict of that I know a lot of people were thinking well Ezekiel 38 and 39 are gonna take place well when you look at that you have to understand that you have a lot more influence of Middle Eastern countries involved in that this particular one um, not so much with this particular uh, incident so you have to be kind of careful when you start looking at prophecy and uh, what other people have to say, and and I know Stephen, you uh, you even talked about that on, the, on your video you did today, uh, concerning that. Uh, if you wanted just to take like about you know a, a minute or two to kind of elaborate on what uh, what you were referring to on that video you did, uh, you'd have to give me the actual point on that one there. But one thing that I do look at is Daniel's prophecy that a lot of people are not aware of. You're talking Daniel's prophecy uh, three and a half years or? Dan Daniel 11. 11. Um, um, I'll, I'll, just I'll just quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll do this I'll one in a quick nutshell, nutshell for people, people brother, brother, so, so people, people understand. understand. Uh, there, there's uh, a very, very fascinating, fascinating prophecy in Daniel 11. 11. When you get down, down to verse 38, 38 through 40, through 40 uh, more, uh, more specifically, specifically uh, when uh, you're in, in verse 40, 40. Uh, uh, and, and this, this is, is, you know, verse, verse 39, 39, everybody, everybody knows, knows, and they shall divide, divide the land for a price. price. What a lot, a lot of people are not aware, aware of, though, is in, is verse, in verse 40, the translation in English is not accurate. Uh, when it says, at the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships, and, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow as he passes through. All right. Let me, let me help people that under that, that you can understand a little bit on the Hebrew side. When it says itanaga imo melech hanagiv, the imo means literally with him. It doesn't mean against him. You can't or push at him. There's no other way to translate imo except with him. The word im in Hebrew just means with, and it's literally. It's not the king of the south. It's the melech hanagiv, which is the king of the Negev desert. Uh, that's when you say the Hanagiv. It doesn't use the word desert in this case here, uh, Midbar, but it, it just says the, he's the king of the Nagiv. And he pushes with this king of the north, Melech HaTzephon, or the word, and Tzephon is used for the word north, but it's also the word hidden. It's like a hidden king, a Melech HaTzephon. But it also doesn't say against him, but Aliyah could be translated that way. It's not the best way. It's it's literally over him. And when it talks about the over him, what I see in this, when it talks about the Kevin Ubarashim, this is like the, the, the chariots and the horses and the ships and everything that come in. It's almost, I, I picture that as 
those chariots as are like the C-130, so for example, because it literally is talking about that this king of the north is going to work with the king of the Negev, and he goes over Israel, because then when it talks about where he's going to, to do these conquering and overflow these area, it says Ba'atzot, and Ba'atz is for the land, but Ba'atzot means lands or countries in this case. So he, whoever it is that is working with the king of the Negev, comes in to conquer the Middle East, and that's really the way it should be translated. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, it's, it's, it always, when you know the Hebrew and, and what it means behind those things, it definitely changes, um, you know, what we read and what we look at. And so, uh, yeah, that, that was very enlight enlightening and thank you. Um, I think the what I was referring to in the video you did is, um, that the I think earlier today you were talking about on your channel uh, those that were trying to maybe force prophecy uh, is what I was referring to. Um, does that does that make sense there? Yes. Yes. I, actually, it's interesting that you bring that up uh, because it, even in Daniel's prophecy, one of the other ones is is verse forty four. Uh, when Daniel writes, but out of the east and out of the north shall a, shall a frighten him, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, not only really to take away many. And uh, that is cor translated correctly on that. And, and, and it is interesting because it, there are some prophecies that, as I have examined, re-examined a lot of the work that I have done over the years, I've, I've been going back, I'm looking at different prophecies, and some of those prophecies I'm like, my goodness, these things have actually already come to pass. Not everything, of course, naturally. If, they, if everything had come to pass, we wouldn't be here. We'd already be gone home, right? But, uh, but like even in this one here, this one obviously in Daniel has never been fulfilled as of yet. And uh, But it is setting a stage. And, and what I find is that the, these leaders in the land, they're trying to manufacture what they believe that prophecy means. And, and, and by the way, that's not a mystery in the, in, in the country of Israel. I mean, look, I was part of the Chabad community of Orthodox Jews for more than 20 years. Uh, so I'm very intimate with the way that prophecy is perceived by rabbis. Of course, not all rabbis, but many of the rabbis, you know, I had very close relationships with, studied with them, et cetera. And, uh, and, and, and the, one of the ideologies are is that you do what you have to in order to make that prophecy manifest. And in Judaism, they don't consider that a bad thing. Uh, and, and in one way, sometimes I wonder if that's not how prophecy, like the prophets when they wrote it, maybe they, they may not have written it like that, but sometimes it just, that's what the prophecy is about, even though they're trying to intentionally bring it about that way. But, but clearly, though, that tidings out of the east and out of the north, that's written in verse 44, just a few verses down from what I just wrote, read, read to you there, we see that there is this, uh, this, and I don't know who the king of the north technically is. Is this a NATO alliance that's working with, the, with Israel that goes in to conquer the Middle East? And, and it literally says he's going to go in there to destroy utterly, to take away many. Is it that Israel is concerned that Russia and China would make an alliance to come against them and so that they're going to try to take down as many of their enemies as they possibly can, regardless of what, how you feel about which side that would be on? I'm okay with that, but it still seems to be obvious that that's what they're up to.